Will Tommy Lloyd's past with the transfer portal have anything to do with his future this offseason? You are Locked On Wildcats. Your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for giving it Locked On Wildcats and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, we've got a lot to get to this show. We are going to mainly talk the transfer portal, though. Obviously, this is a huge uh, this is a huge thing for uh, Arizona moving forward. And what exactly Tommy Lloyd's uh, success rate is. And uh, we're going to go through kind of player by player and, you know, discuss a little bit of uh, this and that and a little bit more. So let's just kind of... We're going to go kind of all over the place. First one is Umar Ballo. Got to give got to give Tommy Lloyd a lot of credit on Umar Ballo. Like I said, uh, I did not see Umar Ballo becoming the player that he became. Not only did I not think that uh, he would become the player that he became, he was uh, someone who became a real difference maker. But also, I think that uh, he's really kind of an indication, though, of what Tommy Lloyd was a- is able to do as a coach, as a, a developer, because, you know, Umar Ballo did not play much at all at Gonzaga. And there was kind of, I don't, and I don't know that anybody, if you, I don't know any Gonzaga fan that was probably really all that upset by it, honestly, because he kind of looked slow. I mean, you know, and again, people that don't like Umar Ballo will say all this now, but they are wrong. Uh, you know, Umar Ballo, they'll say, well, you know, he was slow. He was, you know, a little bit heavy footed, all of that. And, you know, they're right. But, you know, when you look at uh, when you look at the negative aspects of some player and you don't look at some of the positives, you are going to be blinded at times. Umar Ballo, leader of men, though, also does many things very, very well. First thing he does really, really well is he rebounds the basketball. He is one of the best rebounders in college basketball. He's probably one of the five or six best rebounders in college basketball. And he was a uh, he was a player that he was a player that just became a real you just became a real difference maker for Arizona. And again, I think that uh, he is in his last year. Uh, I think he is going to uh, I think he is going to perform very, very well wherever he goes. Sure, he's limited. The free throws uh, will always be an issue, as will the uh, pick and roll defense, which is atrocious. But there's also nothing he can really do about that. But you're also going to take somebody that you know pretty much game in and game out is going to give you 15 points, 10 rebounds, and is going to be a good dude in the process. Again, Really, really good work by Tommy Lloyd and the transfer portal with Umar Ballo. And on top of that, like I said, Umar Ballo is also just a good dude. Everybody likes Umar. If you don't like Umar Ballo, that is probably a you problem. And so, again, got to give Lloyd. That was one of Lloyd's very first moves in the transfer portal. And you got to give him a lot of credit because, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I don't think anybody really knew quite what to expect. And it turned out to be a pretty good hit for the University of Arizona. So Umar Ballo, certainly a uh, certainly a good one. We will give that one an A because anytime you get somebody who's two-time first-team all-conference, and you will take that every single day of the week. Then another one, uh, excuse me, another one. Then you've got Pella Larson. Pell Larson is a uh, Pell Larson is also an A that goes without saying. And Pell Larson was probably, by the way, my bad, Pella. I didn't necessarily see it, but Pell Larson was very successful at Utah in his first year. Averaged nine points, a couple of rebounds, a couple of assists, and he also shot a pretty good percentage as well. And you know, Tommy Lloyd obviously took to Pella very, very quickly when Pella got here. The uh, One of the first, uh, you know, obviously he had the foot injury. He was a little bit out of shape and he didn't look good. That's where my bad Pella came from. But Pella, as he rounded back into shape, became a pretty darn good basketball player for the University of Arizona. And he kind of became a little bit of a jack of all trades. He was a good but not not great defender which I think, you know, people need to say, you know, people will say that Pella was a great defender. He's not a great defender. Somebody like Richard Jefferson was a great defender on the perimeter. Pella is a good defender, but he also was a, a, a willing passer. He was a pretty good wide open shooter, overall a pretty good player. Now, again, 
he was far from perfect. He never really was able to dribble the ball and he would always do some, he was always good for one or two real head scratching plays a game. Yeah. AKA a missed layup, a drive to the basket where he would throw a weird pass that you were wondering what in the world was that he, you know, he would do some weird stuff, uh, but overall this was a, this was another a, he was, I don't know that he was ever a frontline player. He was never in a first team, all conference pack 12 player, but he's somebody that's showing up on some NBA draft boards. And again, I don't really see that. I don't as far. And again, it's just me with a podcast. I don't necessarily see it though. The main reason why I don't see it though, is because he, listen, if you're going to be a three and D guy, you got to actually be able to shoot. Pella has to be wide open. And even then, I don't know that he necessarily really has the confidence to shoot. How many times this year would you watch a team play against Arizona and they would go zone and Pella would pass up open shots or, you know, hesitate to take him. Now, again, he can make them, but I don't know that he's really got that mentality and, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Guy, guy like Grayson Allen is kind of viewed as a three and D type player, but Grayson Allen, I mean, just think about Grayson Allen in college compared to Pella. I mean, there's not really any comparison, but you know, who knows? Maybe Pella can, uh, maybe Pella can make that work. I would expect him obviously off to the NBA and, uh, or if that doesn't work, I think he'll be able to play overseas and I think he'll be able to play overseas for a, uh, you know, for quite a while. I mean, he's a, uh, He's a he's a good ba- he's a good basketball player and he was a solid dude as well while he was here. Uh, Lloyd, you know, I think maybe Lloyd, you know, maybe maybe put the expectations a little too high on him when he's talking about like conference defensive player of the year, best player on the team, stuff like that. He never really was going to reach that kind of because again, anybody anytime you have got a guy that can't really dribble the ball, you're going to have a little bit of an apex that's going to top you out. And obviously Pella dealt with that, but. Overall, though, in your first in Tommy Lloyd's first offseason here at the University of Arizona, the fact that he was able to get Umar Ballo and that he was able to get Pella Larson, players of that ilk and guys that were able to contribute, you know, at a very high level, you know, for multiple years, I think is a real feather in his cap. Now, again, were they all Americans? No. Were they first round picks? No. But, you know, like Doug Gottlieb always says, there are no there's very, you know. There are very few to any pros in the transfer portal. There's a reason they are in the transfer portal. And that's something that you obviously got to keep in mind when you are talking about dudes that are in the transfer portal is that they're in the transfer portal for a reason. They probably, uh, for a variety of reasons, they probably um, have a have a drawback or two. But either way, good job by Tommy Lloyd on that one. Then now, the next one, then it, be, then it becomes a little interesting because then you've got – You've got the uh, the next year class where you've got said. First of all, we'll go with Cedric Henderson. I like Cedric Henderson. I thought this was a good Cedric Henderson. Obviously, came here from a smaller school. His father played obviously with Penny Hardaway at Memphis. I liked Ced. Ced moved into the starting lineup uh, last season after you know Pella kind of struggled in with that role, and he did a nice job. He was a he was a decent defender. He was a decent uh, you know wide open shooter. I liked what he brought to the table. Again, was he should he have been a starter? Probably not. But he was also able to bring just enough to the equation. And I think you look at Cedric Henderson back, and I got fond memories of Ced. Again, it's not like he was a difference maker, but he was also a guy that came in was probably seven, eight points per game. He was a very good rotation player. He was a good dude. That's something that Tommy Lloyd has had. Uh, an abundance of success with is bringing in players that are also just kind of good guys. Said Henderson was that. And, you know, again, he, I think he fit the role exactly what Arizona was looking for when it came to that. Now, again, we're going to talk about another one, but something else that fits the role, eBay motors, my friends, eBay motors, check it out. All right. In this day and age, this day and age, you all know that, uh, People are looking to scam you a lot, you know, with mechanics, charging you more for uh, parts than you really need, all of that. That is annoying. eBay Motors says no more of that, none. Uh, Here's what you do. Millions of parts for your MVP. Win every time with parts that fit your ride. eBay Motors is here to cut out the middleman. 
You go in there and you get the parts yourself and then you can take it to somebody you trust. So they don't mark you up a 35,000% on something that you can do yourself. eBay Motors, millions of people are using this and there is a reason they are using it. Uh, check it out again. Millions of parts for your MVP. Win every time with parts that fit your ride. eBay Motors. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, now we're talking about Tommy Lloyd with the transfer portal. You know what the success rate is, and it's been a pretty good success rate. Now, let's talk. We've already talked about Umar Ballo, leader of men. We've talked about Pella Larson. We talked about Seth Henderson. Courtney Ramey. Courtney Ramey was solid. I think uh, Courtney. I think coming in, I thought Courtney Ramey was going to be a little bit of a different player than he was. I thought that he would be a little bit more of a defensive stopper, kind of a defensive stalwart, just ju based off kind of his, you know, reputation at uh, the University of Texas, some of his numbers. And he wasn't really ever that. And that's OK. But he really was never a defensive stopper. And as far as offense goes, he was kind of weird because you you could tell that he could penetrate but he didn't really penetrate. And, you know, that's something we're going to get into here with another player here in a minute. But overall, good player, though. 11 points, you know, couple assists, couple steals, couple rebounds. Made a huge shot against UCLA in the Pac-12 tournament to be able to win the uh, win the tournament for the – or win the conference for the U of A. So you got to give him that. He was – like I said, though, he was a good player for uh, Arizona – Somewhere between, he certainly wasn't, you know, Umar Ballo or Pella Larson, but he was also better than said Henderson. He was probably somewhere in between, but another guy that was just kind of a good dude, didn't cause a lot of problems, came here, I think was very appreciative of uh, the role that Arizona had and Arizona let him play. My one thing with him though, is that I wish that he would have driven the ball to the basket a little bit more uh, because he, uh, I thought he had a little bit more of that ability than he showed, but you know, be that as it may, certainly a player that you would take every single day of the week again if you could. And Arizona, I thought, did a good job. So you look at this, Umar Ballo, and we're going to go based off expectations. Umar Ballo, A, Pella Larson, A, uh, you know, Seth Henderson, A, and Courtney Ramey, probably B. So overall, a uh, you know, for those years, a pretty good hit rate for the University of Arizona. Now the hit rate's about to get even better with who we have uh, coming up now, and that is this last year's class. Arizona hit the ball out of the park with these transfer portal players in a big way. First one, let's just talk about it, Caleb Love. Yes, yes, yes. I know everybody's bummed about the way the season ended. I get all of that. But this is also somebody that was on the uh, Wooden Award list as one of the 10 best players in college basketball. That is, you take that every single day of the week. You, for a variety, for a big percentage of the season, he are uh, you know well he was he was the best player in the conference and his award or the awards indicated as such. He got uh, the, you know the Pac-12 Player of the Year when the chips were down. The ball was in his hands for the University of Arizona, and you know his accolades showed it out. Now again, was he perfect? No, but like we talked about with players in the transfer portal, they are not going to be perfect. Uh, they are going to be far from perfect because they're in the transfer portal for a reason. There were times, and it was maddening, where you would take some really bad shots, or you would say, "Why aren't you driving to the hoop more?" And I think that was something that's probably a little bit on Tommy Lloyd as well. That uh, uh, just kind of allowing, just kind of allowing uh, Caleb Love to not utilize some of his best skills. I'm fine with taking the open shots, take all, take every single one of those. But when you get the opportunity, drive to the basket. I thought that he should have been, I thought he should have been shooting six, eight free throws per game, something like that. Because again, he has the, he had the ability to be able to get by guys. And when he attacked the basket, he was generally pretty effective at it. Now, there is a uh, there's a very very real chance that Caleb Love is going to come back this year, and if Caleb Love comes back, I'd love to see him kind of part of the pun. I'd love to see him start to work on that a little bit more, getting to the bucket, making plays, making plays off the bounce, and if he can make plays off the bounce, I think Arizona is going to be all the better for it. But Caleb Love's an A plus. There's you know there's no other way to put it. You bring in somebody of that you know you bring in somebody and they get those kind of awards, they get the, that kind of stature. 
you're going to take that every single day of the week, and hopefully Arizona can get him back again. Caleb Love, A+. plus. Okay, now, Keyshaw Johnson. Keyshaw Johnson came to Arizona, uh, and Arizona needed Keyshaw Johnson. They both needed each other, and I think it both it worked out for both sides pretty well. Keyshaw Johnson at uh, San Diego State was a good player, but he was more of just kind of the hustle, energy, defense type dude. And that kind of translated out to about seven and five. He came to Arizona and those numbers became 11 and six. And he had some games where he was dominant. I mean, you think against Purdue, 24 points, eight rebounds. He also showed some of those same uh, characteristics against, you know, against uh, um, uh, Dayton. And he also wanted to be able to showcase that he could shoot the three. And Tommy Lloyd allowed him to, and quite you know it was pretty it was pretty successful. The man, the young man, ended up making I think what thirty eight percent of his threes, something like that, and made it. And he took a couple of game. So there, you know, there's certainly that with uh, with Kay- or excuse me with Keisha Johnson. He also I think that uh, Arizona needed a little bit of toughness. They needed a little bit of uh, defensive tenacity. Azulis Tabellas did a lot of really good things at the U of A, but Azulis I don't know is probably the toughest mental mentally the toughest guy in the world. And that generally showed itself in the NCAA tournament. Keyshaw Johnson overall was pretty good in the NCAA tournament. The uh, thing with Keyshaw is he was just going to always be limited offensively. He was never going to be able to, you know, I think he wanted to shoot the three cool, but there was no dribbling. There was no ability to really be able to beat his man. And that's okay. I mean, that's not something that everybody has in their repertoire, but it was, this was a good marriage, I think for both sides. And honestly, I think both sides would do this one again. Obviously he's out of eligibility. It'll be interesting to see because he's going to get a look at the NBA level because he's got that athleticism. He's got that strength. And, you know, maybe he's got maybe that three point shot will be there to help him. We'll we'll find out. But overall, I think you got to give key shot a very solid B plus. I actually thought coming in, he might be able to do even a little bit more. I thought maybe more of a 14 and eight. But overall, he was really good for U of A. And I don't think that uh, I don't think that we can really uh, you can really dismiss that. Plus, he was a good dude. He was a good leader on the court. And I think that's something that you can't take lightly as well. And then. Jaden Bradley, this one's just getting started. Jaden Bradley, A++. First of all, I got to give Jaden Bradley a lot of credit because he was playing this year behind somebody who he was better than. And, you know, he waited his turn. He did everything by the book. And not only did he do everything by the book, when the time came and Arizona really needed him, he wasn't sulking. He wasn't doing any of that. He came out and he was a he was a monster for the U of A down the stretch. And he was... Arizona when Arizona against Princeton or excuse me Clemson was shooting uh, was shooting three pointers and uh, you know basically playing right into Clemson's hands and shooting the game away. Jaden Bradley was the one that was keeping Arizona in the game by getting past his man, getting to the basket, getting fouled, and once he got to the basket, once he got fouled, he was automatic, and that's where that's where uh, Arizona is with him and defensively he was he was a monster he was he just kind of stepped he just kind of you know he just looked different defensively than pretty much anybody else out there for Arizona and he wants it he was so good defensively that he was stealing passes he was getting called for fouls on blocks and steals that were not there were not fouls at all but it looked like you know because he was getting his hand on you know so many uh, you know different uh he, hands on so many balls that um, he uh, that it looked like he was fouling. But Arizona made the right decision. He is going to be the point guard going into next year, and he I think he's going to be a monster. I keep saying this. I do not understand why he can't beat Jamal Shedd next year from the University of uh, Houston because similar builds, similar games. I get that he's probably not quite the uh, athlete, that, or excuse me, the passer that Jamal Shedd is, but again, I don't see why he can't be that. As a matter of fact, I think he's going to be that. I think he's going to open up a lot of eyes, and I think he is going to be perfect. I think he's going to be absolutely perfect for what Arizona wants to do, and I'm really, really glad, and he's going to be a great fit in the Big 12. Also, something you might say to yourself, where can I watch these games in the Big 12? Where can I get tickets for these games? Well, thanks for asking. Download the Game Time app today. Use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off. You might go into a game, and you might say, 
or you might say, man, I don't know where I could get tickets or I don't know if I could get tickets, you know, whatever the case may be. Game Time says do not worry about any of that. We have you covered. Game Time, check it out. Again, download the Game Time app today. Use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off, and you will go in there and you will. And it's not just for uh, sporting events; it could be for concerts. There's all kinds of stuff there. Don't limit your horizons. Game Time, check it out. Download the Game Time app today. Use code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right. We're just talking about Tommy Lloyd with the transfer portal. And overall, as we've talked about, he's done a pretty good job with the transfer portal. He's gotten players that have come in. Some of them have been a huge difference makers. And overall, they've all been really, really good kids. And that's something that I don't think that you can really uh, you can really take into account. Justin Kyer was somebody that I missed as well. Justin Kyer fit a very nice role off the bench as well. I uh, was remiss on that. But Lloyd has shown that he knows what he's doing with the portal. And a big part of the portal is getting good kids. And he's shown that he knows how to get good kids and players that can fit that role. Now, Arizona's got a couple roles that they're going to need to be filled in this offseason. Arizona needs backup point guard. Love Jaden Bradley. But I also don't see Conrad Martinez being the point guard that is going to be able to get Arizona you know, real consistent minutes. If Jaden Bradley you know, twists an ankle, if he – gets into foul trouble. I don't feel comfortable in the Big 12 with Conrad Martinez out there playing major minutes. So I believe Arizona is going to have to get another point guard and we'll find out what he can do. But he has shown that Lloyd has shown that he's very resourceful when it comes to finding point guards and, or excuse me, uh, when it comes to finding a transfer portal players. And I think he's going to be able to do that. Now, the other one too, that is going to be really big for Arizona is getting a power forward. Arizona has a glaring hole at the power forward spot. And not only does it, it's a glaring hole, it's also a position where Arizona needs to be able to find somebody that can be a difference maker and can get buckets. I've been saying from the beginning, I want Trey Townsend. I think Trey Townsend from Oakland would be a great fit for Arizona because he is uh, he can get buckets. Is he perfect? No. Again, he's in the transfer portal for a reason. But 31 and what 12 on NC State, 17 and 11 on Kentucky. Put up numbers. Again, the field goal percentages weren't the greatest, but he showed that he was somebody that you could give the ball to and he could make plays down the stretch. And Arizona needs that. Arizona didn't have an abundance of those type of players, especially down the stretch where it was basically, let's be honest here, it was basically Jaden Bradley doing that. So again, that's the kind of player that I would like to see Arizona be able to get. And if Arizona could get him, I think it would be a very, very, uh, I think it would be very advantageous for both sides. So we'll find that out. But Lloyd has shown that he knows what he's doing with the transfer portal. Not as only as he's shown that he knows what he's doing with the transfer portal. He's also shown that, you know, just in the game of, uh, you know, putting together a roster, he gets it. He's an introspective dude. Like Matt Mulebach always says, he's going to figure this one out. Arizona, again, you've got a one seed and two, uh, two seeds in his first three years, two sweet 16s. Obviously everybody wants to go further than that. And I totally get it. And I think Lloyd is, Lloyd is obviously the right one for the job. And he's, like I said, he's kind of learning on the job to a certain degree. This is his third year as a head coach. But as far as the transfer portal goes, he's shown that I think he has a very good understanding of what he's looking for and who should be that player. Okay, now, I covered a lot of Arizona basketball this week. There was obviously a lot of moving parts. We're going to be back with you. Uh, talking all kinds of Arizona basketball, Arizona football as well. I know we keep talking about it, but again, Arizona basketball is really what kind of, you know, runs things to a certain degree here, but we are also a football school. So we will get back into that as well. But as always, thanks for making Locked On Wildcats your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. Bear down, back the A, and we will be back with you.